Actually, Kasir Givens, the writer of the show, directed this show. So it's kind of nice to be on the outside this time looking in. A little bit of theater etiquette. Um, restrooms are in the mall. So if you're not familiar with the mall, you take a left, go all the way around behind us. The purple jars in the back is a, our fundraiser. You get to vote for your favorite actor or actress. Um, it's our last day. So if you have a favorite there, this is the time to, do, to give. Uh, they get bragging rights, they get their name on the wall, they get their name or their face out there on the display glass. Whether it's a kid, a youth, or an adult, we have a few adults in this show. So anybody wins. Um, turn your phones off. Uh, pictures are welcome, but you turn your flash off. We will have a meet and greet at the end, and there'll be a 50-50 raffle. We have a very enthusiastic parent who loves to go around and ask for money. So yay for you. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll announce the winner at the end. All righty, so if you got your program, you'll see what's coming up next. Starting tomorrow, if you have any younger kiddos, ages five to eight, we are doing a short improv workshop. This is a very popular workshop. We just finished the older kids. And so this is for the younger ones. If you have a few that might want to come out and learn some theater games and be on stage and get used to it, um, it's only three days only, Monday to Wednesday. And then Haunted House will begin after that. So if you've not been to our haunted house, you really do need to visit it. You get to customize your own scariness. So if you like it really scared, we have been known to scare adults like you wouldn't believe. So they don't think they'll be scared, but we got you. Or if you don't want it scary at all, we're known to even turn the lights on so you can see the whole thing. But um, come visit us during the haunted house. It's lots of fun. And then our next production is Frozen Junior, which is our Christmas show. But before uh, the that Christmas show, we actually have a stand-up comedy workshop. So we'll, on December 2nd, we will bring in uh, professional comedians and they will work with our stand-up routine workshop participants. And that night is a huge comedy show. So Saturday, December 2nd. All right, lots of things. So I want to welcome you to the world premiere of Ready to Play, written by actually two Hullabaloo alumni. Uh, we have Kasir Givens, who directed the show, and then Jack Apache helped out. So we're thrill so thrilled to have, to be able to produce this play. This is the second time that Kasir has written this show. The first one was a musical, Throw Down the Gauntlet, which you see cast photos over there, which was really good. Um, I want to warn you, there is smoke, so you guys will get bombarded probably over here. <laughs> um, there's gun fire, there's a violence. Um, and a lot of blood. So, okay, it's a murder mystery, right? <laughs> so I don't need to swear you to secrecy, but I will bring out Kasir Givens. Come on out. Hi, guys. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming. I am so excited. Uh, my name is Kasir. I am the writer and the director of this production of Ready to Play. The cast and I have worked really, really hard to put this on. And so you guys are really in for a treat. Now, let me start you guys off with, with a question. Okay? Think about this. How would you feel if you were invited to a dinner by a relative or a family friend only to not know if you'll walk out again alive? <laughs> Think about that. Enjoy the show. <laughs> <laughs>
Dear Brittany. Hey, that's me! Dear Damien. Dear Evelyn. Dear Axel. Dear what? Dear Emma. <laughs> Dear Simone. I bet you have been up to a lot over the years and would love to catch up. So I hope you are hungry and ready for a feast. Come this Friday night. It would be my greatest pleasure to welcome you over to a meal prepared by the missus. 7 p.m. shop. Only the finest wine of my creation will be served. It is a must try. One of a kind delicacy. You wouldn't want to miss, so please stop by and enjoy the lovely wine and dine that will be prepared. I'm looking forward to your arrival and the wonderful conversation that will follow. Signed, Harold Mansion. Why, I haven't talked to him since the incident. I don't see any harm in attending. It's not like I have anything better to do. I think it's time I paid my old friend a visit. Friday? That's such short notice. What am I gonna wear? I'm gonna have to think about this one. Finally, a place to wear my new $6,000 gown. I'd have to cancel a very important business meeting, but I haven't heard from him in a while. Why not? No. I think supper with an old acquaintance would be a good rest for my over end massage in solving the global warming crisis. I'm going. Free food, free drinks, and a very uncomfortable and awkward conversation. Sounds like a good time to me. I, I guess, guess I'll head over to Mr. Harold Mansion's mansion. was a mistake. Why, Harold? I think it was a lovely idea. You invite no friends out so you can just catch up? Honestly, I'm just so upset they won't like my cooking. You're the best cook I know, dear. I bet they'll love it. Well, as if anybody bothers to show up, I highly doubt they will. See, I told you, Harold, nothing to worry about. Now, I'll finish the food and you get the dog. Simone, hi! Come on in! Boy, it's been so long. I'm surprised. Surprise, Harold. You know me by now. But there's your food. I'm in. Speed fact. It smells delicious in here. Is that mango? No. Peach cauliflower smell? Ah, you've always had quite a nose on you. I see that hasn't changed. It has been a long time, Harold Mantian. Agatha? Miss Agatha! Have you no other respect? Miss Agatha. It's so good to see you. Do not touch! Stand up straight! In for the camera. Please, ma'am, won't you come in? I'm already in, you foolish man. Please, make yourself at home. Call me Harry. Oh, I know. I'm sorry, Harry. I mean, Harold. 
one. Thank you. Man, this is a really nice place you have here, man. You've become a very successful man. I wish I could say the same for myself. <laughs> Quiet down, loud man. Use the inside voice. I've got this you respect. Ah, oh, she's always been a stickler. But you have always been loud. Must be something that runs in your genes. What is that supposed to mean, Harry? You know what? Whatever. Hey, Harold. Long time no see. I brought you an apple pie. Tanya, you didn't have to bring anything. My wife has prepared a huge feast. Oh, I know, I know. But I couldn't show up empty-handed. It didn't feel right. Ah, oh, you were always so nice, Tanya. I've missed that. So, where would I sit this? Oh, I'll take it off your hands. You can just stay here and mingle. I'll be right back. Well, well, well. Out of everyone in this room, I think that. I don't think so. Good go. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the lovely Harold Mansion's mansion, huh? Kind of an ironic name, isn't it? Boy, it's gone silent in there. I was wondering what was... Gwen! Little Gwenny! You have changed. Like... A lot. What? You don't like the new look? Who would have ever guessed that little Gwenny would look this good in black? Well, I'm glad you came. It was a very hard debate. Take a picture, it'll last longer. Harold Mansion, how's all the wine success treating you? <laughs> well, you look at this house and you tell me. Oh, there's the attitude I remember. So. What's with the invite, Harold? I thought we weren't on speaking terms. Let the past stay in the past, Axel. I asked you here so we could uh, catch up, make amends. Uh, you showed up, did you not? I'm hoping you want the same. <laughs> Damien, what are you doing? I was kind of wondering the same thing. Why did you ask me to come here? What do you mean I never asked you to come? That simply can't be true. I got a letter. Do you have it with you? Well, this is my handwriting, but I never sent this to you. Then why was it taped to my door then? I personally went to the post office and mailed all of these letters. I never went to any of the houses. Wow. This is all um, very awkward and extremely uncomfortable. I'm gonna go home. Oh, uh, wait, Damien. Since you're here, why don't you uh, stay and have dinner? Mingle. Ah, same old Emma. I am glad you've accepted my invite. Well, it's the only invite outside of the family matter that I've ever received. Now that we're on the topic, you've never invited me to any of your social gatherings in the past. Why have you decided this time? Well, Emma, I wanted tonight to be a special night. Just me, my wife, and some old friends talking away, sharing laughs and old stories from the past. What stories are you referring to, Harold? We were never really that close. We don't have any memorable memories we can share. I have a few stories I can share. Well, maybe my lips have some stories of their own. And who knows, maybe your wallet has some memories it'd like to make for future stories. Brittany, wow! Um, hi. Hello, everyone, and a big warm welcome to our home. You remember my wife? Right, your, your wife. 
I'm sorry about the mess. I hope we made enough food for everyone. Right, so is the food done or... Oh, wow, <laughs> silly me. Where are my manners? Please, come and enjoy the food I cooked. Oh, oh yes, Just what you mean. Please, follow me to the dining area. Of course, Harold. I would be delighted. Why, it smells delightful in... Oh, other people. <laughs> I wasn't expecting such a full house. The house ain't full. There's plenty of room here. It is a mansion after all. Oh, honey. Please, sit down and enjoy the food I cooked. It's so enjoyable. So, everyone, shall we go around and say how we know Harold? Okay. <laughs> I'll go first. My name is Mackenzie Mansion, wife of Harold Mansion, as you can probably guess. And it is an honor to have you here at our lovely home. Okay, who's next? I guess I'll go. Hi everyone, my name is Simone and me and Harold. Harold and I? Really dude? Sorry. Harold and I, we go way back. Our parents were best friends, so we had no choice but to be friends too. Lovely. Hi, I'm Tanya and I know Harold from back in high school. We were really close all four years. Had almost every class together. We talked every day. We even did volunteer work at local community dinners. That doesn't sound like Harold. The name's Brienne! And Harold was my old college buddy, and man, did he like to party! Yeah. I mean, man would drink pack after pack after pack after pack after pack after pack! No wonder he's a master in the alcohol industry. Yeah, because <laughs> that's the reason why, isn't it, Harold? <laughs> okay, next. Oh, I'll go. Hey, everyone, my name's Brittany. <laughs> I 
Okay, on that note, my name is Damien. I don't really know Harold that well, but Mackenzie and I, we were friends years back. I only met Harold a few times throughout the years, not enough to fully know him though. Hopefully tonight will be different. People call me Emma, but what they don't call me is late to dinner. <laughs> I guess that wasn't a good icebreaker. You see, I'm not an expert at the whole social interaction thing we seem to be having here tonight. But back in school, Harold and I used to be homework buddies. Well, more like I would do his homework and he would hang out with his buddies. I am confused and honored to be here at my first out of family gathering. The name is Ms. Agatha, and yes, the Ms. is highly necessary. Is it? I have known Harold since small child. I used to babysit him for years and years and years <coughs> and years and years and years. And okay, years. we get it. Do not interrupt me. As I was saying, Harold. Cute baby. Did he grow up? Satan take over his body. <laughs> I was not that bad. Let me just say, I now hate children. <laughs> well, the name is Axel. <laughs> uh, Harold and I were business partners years back. Strictly work was all we really did. <laughs> it was most important. And Axel, you don't know what a pleasure it was working with. Oh, I bet it was. <laughs> well, it's not like I need an introduction or anything. Then sit down. I <laughs> and the Evelyn of Evelyn Winery. It is the first place winner at every wine tasting competition ever. I started off broke with a dream. And now look at me. I am dripping in beads. I'm sure you've all tasted a bottle. Speaking of bottle, where is that one-of-a-kind wine that is a must-try, Harold? Yes, I am most intrigued. We will all have a taste. But little Gwenny still has to introduce herself. <laughs> who am I? You and Mackenzie should both know who I am. Pretty clearly by now. Gwenny, I... And stop calling me that! I'm not a baby, and I'm not your little Gwenny, and I never will be anymore. Ooh. Well, you guys obviously have some unfinished business. Uh, she'll be okay. But uh, Mackenzie and I have something we would like to say. And we are sure you all will be thrilled. Uh, now, it's... True that I've asked you all here tonight for a reason. You've all made a deep impact in my life. And you all mean something very special to my wife and me. Get to the point so we can go back to our meal. Mackenzie and I are expecting. Oh, 
Jackson was shot and killed right in front of us, and you expect us to contain ourselves? Nothing good ever comes from a panic. Has anyone tried calling the police? Put it. A guy has been shot and killed by someone here. I know how this all goes. This is every horror mystery movie ever. Someone invites a group of people over to their home. The spouse, you can go either way. You, Tanya, already taking charge, trying to pin the blame on anyone but yourself. And you, Brienne, I wouldn't be surprised if you tried to become someone's love interest. <laughs> And you, Agatha, you're the character in the movies that everyone thinks you just can't be you. The way you're always targeting people. And then you have the dumb one. Man, I would hate to be that one. Yeah. <laughs> Point proven. And then you have the rich snob, thinks he's more innocent and better than any of the rest of us. Woo! But there's been times with people like you. And you, Axel, you're the character who make everyone as guilty as panic mechanism. Oh, and you, Emma, you are the nerd. Go calculate your way through all of this. Maybe get yourself into trouble doing that. You watch me. And you, Simone, you're the character who is here just because. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You talked about everyone here beside yourself. Where do you play in all of this? Look at me. Who do you think I am in every horror movie? I think he might be... The dumb one. <laughs> I am the one who dies first thing. That's why I'm trying to get the hell out of here. What exactly are we going to get here? Each one of us know, Harold, some more than others. And in all of the movies, someone here is the cause of this. And we have to be the ones to figure it out. We are in a real life murder mystery. I'm with him on this one. Guys, is everything OK? I thought I heard a loud bang. What the hell just happened? Damien? Damien! Is he in the bathroom? I'm gonna be sick. Huh? Oh my god! Oh, oh my this god. is amazing! What is wrong with you? It's amazing! Don't touch me! We need to focus and get to the bottom of this before anyone else gets hurt. That is two people dead already. We don't need to raise that number. Everyone, over here now! Okay. We need to take this slow and carefully, from scratch, starting in the dining room. Okay, I'm right behind you. the body. See if anything on him can help us find who did this. <laughs> we? What do you mean? We? There is no way I'm touching a dead body. Well, someone has to. Move out of the way, you all a bunch of wimps. Hey, it's a baby. I love it. Ew. Oh, God. That full of wound. He was shot. <gasps> oh, I, so how, how can this be? We don't own a single gun. No, well, well, someone had to bring it here. <laughs> we need to remove body. So what you're saying is, is we should just move around a dead body? Yes. Yes. But a corpse will leave an extremely, oh, and I mean 
an extremely bad odor. So, I imply, if you want to have a nose by tomorrow morning, that we should move the body somewhere in a different room. I have no idea. This is way too much to handle. I will move Harold since you are all pathetic and weak. You're all sitting in the daddy room! I think I would have noticed this all pulled out a gun! Right. <laughs> all except for... Oh my god, you're right. You're actually smart for once. <laughs> no. No! There is no way you guys think I did this. Back away from me, please! You were the only one not at the table when Harold was shot. I went upstairs. When you left for upstairs, you made quite the scene, as if you were very pissed off at Harold. Maybe even pissed off enough for murder. No! That is not fair. Tell us, Gwen, why were you mad at Harold? It's none of your business. Guilty! <laughs> it's written all over your face. I didn't kill anyone. Why were you so upset at Harold? Why did you kill him? Stop! I wasn't always like this. I was a little girl living in an orphanage. No family to call my own. One by one, all of my friends getting adopted, except for me. I was 15, the oldest one in the orphanage. Who would ever want to adopt a teenager? But well, one day, I see him. Harold comes in and starts looking around. And he walks up to me and says, You, you are perfect. I didn't understand why he chose me. At the same time, I didn't care. Finally, I had a family to call my own. Or so I thought. Harold made those next few months the best I've ever had. Fancy dinners, concerts. Anything you can think of. But one day he told me, Come on, little Gwenny. We're going for a ride. We went on rides all the time, but something about this one just had a different vibe to it. So we get in the car and we drove and drove and drove. <laughs> he drove me right back to the orphanage. I didn't understand why I was there until he said the words. Little Gwenny, I'm sorry. The only family I've ever known didn't want me anymore. I turned 18 and was thrown out into the wolves. But I managed on my own. And I always will. That's the point in my life when the world went dark, and I went dark with it. But I don't have it in me to kill someone. Gwen, you deeply regret that decision we made. Why'd you do it then? Why'd you get me back? Uh, Harold and I, we were trying for children, and we succeeded. What? Wait, you're having a baby? That was the reason we all called you here. <laughs> Tell you the big news. But you knew that already, didn't you, Gwen? How could I have known? You knew she was having a baby. So you threw a fit, went to the steps, and right before they announced the news, you shot him. <coughs> out of spite and jealousy. Where's the gun, Gwen? I don't own a gun. And look, even if I were on the steps. <coughs> The angle of where Harold was sitting and where the steps are doesn't add up. I couldn't have done this. <laughs> are you guys really believing this right now? She's yes. right. There's no way she could have shot him from the steps. But what about when the lights were shut off and Damien was shoved down the dumbwaiter? Look at me! Does it look like I'm big enough to pick up someone and shove them down the dumbwaiter? Yeah. No, it can't be her. I believe you, Gwen. Well, we have to find the gun, so no one else can use it. We need to spread out and search for the gun, and report it back here in the living room. Go! Okay, come on, move. Okay, I'll play that stand. so smart. Okay. They could have just disappeared, though. can you be? Ah! Did you find it?
was sitting in this exact seat, correct? Yeah, so stop with the riddles and get off the point. So, if you follow from where Harold was sitting, it leads us right to, I knew it, the bookshelf. Who are the people in this photo? It's Harold's mom, my mom, and me as a little girl, but... Right. Now explain why there's a person in the photo with a hole going through their face. The person's Harold, but I don't know how the hole got there. <laughs> so, it was you. You did this. No. You did no. this to Harold. I haven't seen the photo in years, but... Harold throws folly all the time. Our parents are best friends, so every conversation us. Harold did this, and how about that? Look what Harold is doing. Being his best friend, I supported him in every accomplishment he had. That's until Adult decided to enter the state science fair competition. That's where the photo was taken. I entered my classic baking soda and vinegar volcano. And he entered his laundry, bowling robots. And as predicted, as predicted, he won. First place. And as for me, I didn't even place. All I got was his stupid participation trophy. I was cool with it though. That was until the news station came to get his interview. And he and his mom were on live television. I was happy for him. That was until my mom was over there with him. Praising him. Showing him more love than she's ever shown me in my whole life. I didn't even get a nice try out of my mom. But he got all of her worst good praise. How can you love someone else's kid more than your own? The phone was fully intact the last time I saw it. I have no idea how the hole got there. <laughs> so that's the motive. Jealousy! No. Just wait until I tell the others about this! <laughs> I didn't see anything! I didn't see anything! 
see your dad face. I really don't yeah. care. That one. Mackenzie! <gasps> oh! Oh my gosh, you're right! Was she really not here this whole time? If she isn't here, then um, where is she? Probably planning her next victim. <gasps> or dead. <laughs> I told you guys it wasn't me. Until Mackenzie is found, your name is not cleared. If she's dead, then you'll have a lot of explaining to do, Emma. And if she's alive, then we'll deal with that when the time comes. So Tanya, miss, taking charge, what do you suggest we do? Because if you don't remember, last time we split up, there was another death. He is right. Well, I mean, we could all stick together and cover the rooms one by one, but I mean, that would take forever. Uh, are you sure we should even be looking for her? We have to find her before she kills someone else. Or if she's dead, we have to rule her out as a suspect. We need to split up, preferably in groups. That way, everyone has been someone and we cover more house. Good call, Agatha. Miss Agatha. Amateur. Miss Agatha. Okay, let's split up into these groups. Let's have Evelyn, Gwen, Ugh. and Axel oh! become one group. And Miss Agatha, Brittany, oh! and Emma become another group. I can teach you something. Brienne and I will be the last group. All right, these groups sound good to me. All right, everybody, let's head out. Let's find Mackenzie. Go! <laughs> Thank you for that giving part. me a German moment of rage. Stop! You stuck up to <gasps> death, girl? Oh, God, what if she's being cookie? She's not a lady cookie. She could be. No. <laughs> Smell your own lip gloss. <laughs> so, Tanya. Is there any specific reason why you chose me to be your partner? Well, I mean, I picked the groups at random. And you just so happen to be the last person. So I guess I just screwed up with you. Sure, sure. I totally believe that explanation. Don't get any ideas, Brienne. What ideas? Do you have any you care to share? We have a murderer in our midst. And this is what you're thinking about right now? You can't trust anyone. Then why am I trusting you? Man, I'm starving. I have to get back before others find me. Brittany, 
go to the other group and tell them we've got her. We've got her. All right. You guys have no idea what we're talking about. Just let me go.
Alive! The baby's still alive! <laughs> what are we supposed to do now? <laughs> There's nothing we can do. We could, um... Uh, don't even say it! Well, if the baby stays in there, it'll die. <laughs> if you guys don't remember, one of you are a killer. <laughs> The baby is no safer out here. We can't just leave a living baby in there, guys. What do you suggest we do? Cut it out of a dead woman? <laughs> I mean, I could do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is insane! All of you are insane! <laughs> He's crazy, don't help me. <laughs> okay, so you're, um, you're gonna do this? Yes. I couldn't live with myself if I at least didn't try to save the baby. Okay, um, what stuff and things are you gonna need? Okay, knives, all sizes, some blankets, water, and a ton. Oh, and I need a ton of alcohol. Wait, what's the alcohol for? Me. <laughs> I'm gonna need it. Me too? Get him some. On it. I'll come with you. I need as much focus and concentration, and the noise will just distract me. Got it. Thank you. Next time. on baby. Each year as he grew, he became more and more demonic, setting traps, hurting dogs, catching fires, evil child, made my job live in hell. Then, when he was 16, he decided he did not want me to watch him anymore, so he lied. I saw Agatha stealing money and jewelry out of your purse. I'm not making this up. 
Harold's parents came to me, accused me of theft. I was every bit of confused. They asked to search first, so I did. They pulled out stacks of cash and jewelry. See? I told you I wasn't making it up. Demon Boy lied on me. That <laughs> be my job. But I didn't want to watch him anymore anyway. That was blessed. The bad part was he lied. What I am from, you lie, stop, gone. I would never forgive the <coughs> boy for lying. That's probably how he became so successful. I always thought he'd either end up in prison or asylum. Something wasn't right with that boy. So you've known Harold from the early years of his life. <coughs> How old are you? <laughs> Never ask women that. Disrespectful, young people. Ow! Here. You take baby. Where are you going? Don't worry about it. Okay. I am so sorry you have to live in this environment. You shouldn't have to be here. You should have both parents with you, alive. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Okay, this is the game they want to play. 
play then? Fine. Everyone go to our room and stay there for the night. We have to catch this psychopath before the rest of us are dead as well. Are you guys ready to play the game?